Hey guys, I'm Will Patterson. I've been using Affinity for the past six months during beta. And during that time, I've come up with a lot of tips and things you might not know if you just started out in Affinity. So here's 10 or so tips in Affinity that you can't live without. So if you're in the vector studio and you grab a shape, let's take this square and you drag it out like so, but you wanna make multiple copies. Well, you can simply use your arrow keys to make multiple copies of that one shape. You can do it to the right and you can do it to the bottom. And if you hold shift, you can actually keep this in the aspect ratio that you would like. Boom, there's all your shapes, bunches of squares right there. But let's say we've got another shape in the middle and we wanna create some crazy duplications. If you press enter, you'll get this move duplicate box that pops up. Now let's scale this down to like 20% and then let's change the vertical to like, let's say 20 as well but let's duplicate this. Press this duplicate button and then we're just gonna increase that slider. Let's say 21. And we're gonna press 90% in fact. And we can change the distance size and we can create some crazy mind blowing shapes. We can go horizontal a little bit too. Change the angle if we wanted to. Change the rotation to go crazy. And then with all of these, we're gonna add a little black stroke to it so we can see it all happen. And you can group them and you can just do literally the same in another way. And that way you can create some cool patterns no matter what and mess around with it in just a few seconds. Snapping or smart guides work differently in Affinity. Go up to the top here and you have this little magnet icon. Next to it, you have this big dialog box that looks like a lot in there, but don't worry, you can press the presets. And depending on what you're doing, whether it's layout or like creating a logo or object creation, you can just select them and it will pick all of these settings for you, or you can actually just go in and change them. So snap to guides, snap to baseline grid, snap to grid, snap to margin, and you can change the candidate list as well. This comes in really handy when you're doing brand guidelines, things like this. But speaking of layouts, you'll probably need a grid like this to do it, but how do you create one? Well, in a new document, you can go to any of these studios, doesn't matter which one, and go up to view and go down to guides, and you'll get another box that pops up like this. And you can choose how many columns you have. Let's say we want eight columns let's say we want four rows and change the gutter values i use my arrow keys and shift to do this and then we have different styles of guides as well we can actually choose filled or outline filled just fills them in like so and outline here you can change the color origin you can add vertical guides if you wanted to so we could add another one here at different points we can add another horizontal one here as well and just move them around like so and boom you've got your layout like so and it works Works really well for brand guidelines documents like all of these ones that I've worked on with a similar grid it keeps everything nice and harmonious now this preview button you might not see and that's because it's right up at the top and I've added it in there and the way that I added it into my layout scene is by going up to right click at the toolbar customize toolbar and scroll down and you'll see preview mode is here just drag that in like so and you've got it right there now showing the preview actually shows you everything that's in the document. So if I go off preview, it will actually show you the main of what it would actually look like. The three is being canceled out by the artboard. But if I go into preview, it shows the three behind it. Now I normally have to press control W for this and that is not a very nice shortcut. So let's create our own shortcut. Press command or control comma and you'll get to the settings page. Go down to shortcuts here and it looks daunting, but it really isn't. To set up your own shortcut, just go to this part here, affinity, go to view and scroll down until you get to preview mode. And when you find the thing that you want the shortcut for, just simply go to the right of it, select it, type in your new shortcut, which for me is shift W. And just like so, you've got a new shortcut as quick as that. But whilst we're in the settings, you probably wanna go ahead and turn on machine learning models. You want to install these. These, some of them are local, which means that nothing's going out online, no generative AI, but some of them are Canva only subscription. This segmentation one, which I believe is just in affinity by itself, is one way you can magically select objects or pixels in an image. Whilst we're in the settings, let's head down to tools. And here I can change the handle size of everything from small, default, medium, and large. I like large. What that does is it means that if I've got an object like this, these parts, the bounding box and these transform handles will be a bit larger than normal. If I had them small, they are absolutely tiny. If I have them large, they're huge. I like my handles huge. That's the same for anchor points as well. It makes the anchor point selection a lot easier as well. 
Did you know that image trace is now in Affinity and it's the fastest I've ever seen? Let's take this image from Unsplash. This should not be able to be traced and you probably think it would break your computer tracing it. But watch this. If I select it and go up to vector, go down to image trace, you're thinking that you're waiting. Like when is it going to trace this image? But then you have this box that turns up here. And if I just press apply, you start to realize that it has actually image traced this, but ridiculously. If I go and press command Y and I go into this outline mode you can see all of the shapes and it did it so fast over the past six months i've been using framer to redesign our whole agency's website we've got two years worth of work on there and it's been insane and powerful and just great to use but there's one thing that has really caught my eye and that is framer keep updating nearly every other week they're bringing a huge update and the newest one is called design pages this means that framer now isn't just a website design tool where you can design code free websites beautifully like this one that i'm doing video coming soon but now you can design just normally graphics social media graphics you've got the pen tool in there with a whole vector editing workflow which is pretty cool you can start in framer using design pages just to rough out some ideas collaboratively which we do as a team as well and when you need it to go to a website you just promote it to a website framer isn't just a site builder it's a true design tool that also publishes professional production ready sites and it's free so click the link down below and thank you framer for sponsoring this video and making it happen now here's a cool feature that you probably didn't know if you go to the top right and press customize toolbar in any studio scroll down until you see the different view modes you've got split view view mode and advanced view mode go to split view mode and drag it up into your toolbar what this allows you to do is in split view mode, you can choose different view modes and split your screen. So if I select the pixel mode, then I go into vector, which is command Y or outline mode. I can literally split screen this in real time, see what I want to see, but also split screen it. And how fast is that? That's ridiculously fast. I can't believe how fast that is. And when you want to get off this split view, all you do is you press this just single preview button at the top. For all my designers out there, if you go to the color swatches panel in any studio, go down to colors, you'll notice we have Pantone colors in Affinity. You're welcome. And thank you Affinity for that. Here's an image of a measuring tape that I took for my 3D printer, but I want to get rid of the background. Well, you can do this quickly in Canva AI. Go to the Canva AI part here, and at the top here, you can actually select background or remove background. If I just press remove background, give it a sec, it will remove the background of the image just like so. And how clean is that? Now, if you don't want to go to the Canva AI tab every time you want to remove a background image, you can go to any studio, right click at the top, and you can find that literally down at the bottom. Remove background and just add it to the top here. And anytime you want to remove the background off an image, you can just press that button. For any of my Lightroom friends out there and photographers, if you go to Canva AI and you have the subscription, you get access to a really, really cool portrait lighting tool. If I just select my image here and select portrait lighting tool it will analyze it and you now have a light if you play around with these settings here like the strength and the distance you can see that this will actually dynamically light me in different ways this is perfect for portrait lighting and you don't just have to have one light you can have multiple i can add a new light within this which is insane and i'm going to have a spotlight let's turn this spotlight around let's change this distance and strength to max it boom and press apply and it's applied straight to your image how awesome is that let's say you have an image like this that you've brought in and you want to apply some live effects to it well in any studio if you've got the layers panel open you'll see that we have this effects button down here a lot of you will see that it looks like blending mode and you've got all sorts of different things these are all live however if you press this hourglass or this filter button here we can add a live filter to it which is really cool if i add twirl to this and you've probably seen this on my first video we can change the twirl live by doing this by changing and let's just go crazy but one thing that i love about affinity's live filters is that you can just press on the screen and have it wherever you want you can literally move it with the cursor of your mouse and when i press enter you'll notice in the layers panel on the right the twirl is there and we can go in and edit that again by just clicking on the icon and editing it and moving it press enter it's still there 
non-destructive. And we can even add a half tone to this as well and change it by using our mouse cursor on here to get the desired effect. It just feels more tactile. Change the cell size, the contrast. Let's do a color half tone. That looks cool. And again, this half tone is an effect applied to this layout wild now let's say i want this image to be inside of a shape well i'm going to go to my vector studio i'm going to bring up a kind of this thing here now with these circles and shapes they're live shapes so we can edit them as we like like so and let's say i want this image to be framed by the circle well all we do is in the layer panel is drag your layer into the right side of that circle and let go and it's created a clipping mask for you just like that and it's still all there you can still change it and move it around and do whatever you want but you've got yourself a little shape there for any of my illustrator friends out there that's wondering where all the corner rounding things are well don't worry in affinity it's a bit different what you do is you select your shape and in the vector studio and in the toolbar you'll notice we have a tool called corner tool it's just the letter c if you want the hot press for it what you do is you select the anchor point that you want to cut round the corner of and you just drag and it shows you the actual circle radius of how it's doing you can select more than one as well and you can go pretty wild with this too and create some interesting shapes but what about outlining how do we offset the path and outline it well it's pretty simple if you want to offset the path i just duplicate this by pressing command j and i go to the offset tool these guys call it the corner tool which is o and with the shape selected we can actually drag this down and offset it like so take that shape add a different color to it and boom we've created an offset live simple as that now when we press bake appearance that means that we'll get an actual shape that we can work with as well if you enjoyed that video and you liked the tips that i gave then subscribe down below more videos like this are coming and i'll catch you guys in the next video see you soon